they're going to pay you. I've raised three, and we have three grandchildren. Alice said to me when our oldest grandson was born, how come you never changed CJ's diapers? I said, I, I helped. I, I'm not going to brag that I was hands on day. But I helped free and changed them. Only after I realized the kitty was not going to. But I'd done my tour of duty. I will do other things. If you want a church full of children, you got to put up with noise. You want a church full of children? You're going to have them board out and say so. Kids say the craziest things. But what great joy there is with laughter and noise. I pray to God I never become such a grouchy old guy that I can't handle noise in our house. We've had all three grandkids, you know, one lives with us, but all three grandkids this weekend. And I'm proud to say our grandchildren never pitch a my wife just put her throat. <laughs> they can, but you know what? I see some kids are so sick they can't. They can't pitch a fit. And I count my blessings. But he says, he calls them dear brethren. And then he says, be steadfast. Be strong. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, Paul told the Ephesian church. I'm not strong by nature. I, I have not. I have failed. And it haunts me. Not a day goes by in my life that I don't regret my failure. But I have to somehow get beyond that and press forth toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I have to shake that off. And, I, and on a go-forward basis, I pray God will continue to strengthen me. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. My strength to be strong doesn't come from me, but it comes from Christ. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. If you're struggling to be strong, ask Jesus to live His life through you. And be firm. Not rigid, but firm. <coughs> Unmovable. Stand your ground in the storm. Jesus talked about a house that was built upon a rock and a house that was built upon the sand. He said that the house that was built upon the rock were those who hear my sayings and keep them. Remember people would come to Jesus and they'd, they'd ask to be healed and he said, do you believe? And they'd say, yes Lord, I believe. But help thou my unbelief. In the midst of a storm, Jesus helped me to be strong. Jesus, when I hear your sayings, I hear them. Help me to keep them. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And has your life been shaken already? There will be trials. There will be tribulations. You may even face a crisis of faith. You know what a crisis of faith is? That's when what you're experiencing just doesn't match up to your theology. And guess what has to change? Your theology. I've been shaken to the core. I did not come through with flying colors. But Paul said, if we keep our eye on what's coming next, we keep our eye and have a, our view on eternity, he says, then be unmovable. Don't be shaken. Don't give up. I may stumble, I may fall, I may scrape my knee, I may bumble and stumble, I may even sin. Little children, this is what John said, little children sin not, but if you do, but if you do, you have an advocate with the Father, even Christ Jesus. Because of the wherefore, we can stand strong and be unmoved. I don't know what the future holds for me or for you. I know this, that if something comes that shakes the very core of my being, I have a Christ who can stand with me and live in me, and I have brothers and sisters that will help me. I pray to you. If you know of someone who's struggling, help them. 
Help them with your prayers. Help them with your love. Help them with just putting your arm around them. Sometimes the greatest thing you can do is listen. Listen. The greatest need people have is to tell their story. I'm amazed that, that total strangers will tell you their story if you show them an open and willing face or gesture. They'll tell you their story. When I go to Walmart, I, I ride to go bookies. Just the person requested that they get a bunch of them that are faster. So go faster. <laughs> you know what I did yesterday? I got to tell you this real quick. I was in an aisle waiting for Kitty. He was going out. So I took it. I was going like this. And I was waiting for someone to say, What are you doing? I'm, I was going to say, I don't like to do a DD 500. I'm getting the tires all sticky and, you know, trying to warm up my tires here. But I was in the aisle for the diabetic stuff a couple weeks ago. And I, I really, it really bothers me that I got to pay 17 bucks for 50 cents. When I saw there was a packet of 100, but you had to buy a new machine for $9. I didn't have the money. I, I could have had it. But I didn't want to spend the money then. But yesterday, I got that. So I get a cheap cash But the two weeks ago, I sat there, and I was looking at that, and looking at this. Some guy was looking at stuff. I just looked up at him. I kind of went like that. And before you know it, we were into a discussion why he was buying eye drops. Because his CPAP machine leaks and it's causing dry eyes. I listened. I told him, you know, I, I, I have a buy pack. You know what a buy pack is? I said, that's where the pressure is coming out. It's different than it is coming in. And we began to have a total conversation with a stranger. And he saw us buying diabetics. I said, my wife's diabetic. He said, I have to give her her shots because she gets really black. And I began to give him advice. A total stranger. And other people. People are ready and willing to let you into their lives if they realize that you're going to care and you're going to listen. If you were, and I hope this doesn't happen to anybody, they would, if you had to go to the emergency room today, what happens when you get there? <laughs> Somebody's going to ask you what brought you to the hospital. Even if they take you by ambulance, a nurse comes in. What's going on today? I thought they just told me. Then a doctor will come and say, tell me what's happening. I thought the nurse told me, there's therapy in getting your story out. There's therapy in people talking. Many times when people say, I don't want to talk about it, okay. just hang out with them a little bit. They'll begin to talk. We support one another when we listen. Sometimes people take forever to get to the I talk to people for a living. One of the hardest things for me is not to cut them off and say, you know, you know what the term cut to the chase means? You ever hear that cut to the chase? It's an old movie term from the cowboy movies that when the when the director was, you know, okay, let's cut to the chase. The scene where they where the, the cowboy's going out of town and everybody's chasing after him, the posse's after him. Cut to the chase, get to the point. I listened to a lady one day for over seven minutes tell me. Al, that she was tired of calling in and her fee was $350 for 15 minutes and she was now going to go our way. Bill them. I don't know. Went on for seven minutes and, and I'm lucky that I'm not talking to her husband because he's really mad. I like when people say, I'm going to worry, I'm very angry right now. And I want to say, I've been married for 32 years, I've had people angry at me before. <laughs> for 33 years it is, I guess. 34, I don't know how long we've been married. <laughs> and I'm going to face it when I get home today, too. <laughs> but after all that, I finally said to her, okay, whatever. She said, what? I said, no, I don't mean it that way, ma'am. What I mean is this. We're seven minutes into this, and I still don't know why you're home. Within three minutes, I showed her that our company processed her kids' claims for so she took another five minutes then to say that we should have told her that. It's awful hard for me to keep my mouth shut. And after she came up for air after five minutes, I said to her, we did tell you. We sent you an explanation of that. It's not always easy to sit and listen to folks. But when we do, we help them to be strong in the Lord 
And then Paul concludes this. He says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. The kingdom is advanced by our combined efforts. There's a place for everyone, and there's a work for everyone. Jesus said, occupy till I come. Work, for the night is coming in which no man can work. There is no task that is unimportant. What can I get myself involved in in the work of God? A creator, taking up the offering, singing, cleaning the church, mowing the lawn, working with children in children's church or a Sunday school class. We need those things. We need to fill those positions. Working on outreach, helping with the Fifth Sunday Fellowship clean up. All kinds of things. Paul says, abound in the work of the Lord. Be fruitful in the work of the Lord. Why? Because we're dealing with eternal things. Things of eternity. We need to be at work. Because we're a church on a mission. And not just a church on maintenance. Our mission is simply this. That whatever we do, we are preparing the hearts of men, women, boys and girls for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're preparing them and we're making them ready for eternity. Because something happens when we close our eyes. And we pass from this life to the next. Be steadfast. Unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Why is it not in vain? Because it's rewarded and recognized in eternity. And because... There is fruit to what we do. I visited with a woman. I think I told you this story one time before. I'll tell it again in closing. I visited with a woman whose husband had pastored this church out in western Pennsylvania. And she was still in the church. My friend had pastored that church when he first came out of Iowa. Her name was Sister Stewart. And my friend and I were in her home visiting her one day when I pastored out in western Pennsylvania. And we began to talk. And I said, Sister Stewart, how, how did you get involved in ministry? She said, when I was a teenage girl, I began to teach Sunday school class. She said, I really didn't want to, but my pastor asked me. There was only one kid in the class. She said, but I began to develop such a bond and such a relationship with this kid. She said, and he really began to take him. Before he wasn't you know, kind of not really into anything. But she said, but through this class, I saw him begin to take in the word of God. I saw a change in his life. And she said, it's just amazing. And she said, you know, he grew up to be a missionary in Israel. And then later he, well, first he was a missionary in Peru and he lived on this houseboat. And then he was a missionary in Israel. And I said to her, what was his name? She said his name was Charles. Charles Hahn. Who Charles Hahn was? Charles Hahn taught at the Bible school that I went to prior to me going. Charles Hahn had come back on many occasions to preach and to teach. Because of one faithful teenage girl who loved a, a boy that was a little off, you know, just wasn't socially getting, it, getting along with anyone. She loved him enough and loved Jesus enough that as she began to teach him, the Spirit of God in her. Heaven will reward Sister Stewart for the love she poured in to Chuck Hall. Thank God. It's not how big your class is. It's just that you've been faithful. The greatest teacher of all time usually only had a class of 12. And sometimes only three of them were really paying any attention. Yes, he ministered to the multitudes. But the most rich and rewarding times when it was just him and the boys. Let's find something to do. And let's do it with all of our money. The CEO of the company that I worked for a year ago came. And he told the story about the paper clip on the floor. And he said that he had asked the man one time, how did you become so successful and your company become so successful? He said, because I picked up paper clips off the floor. He said, what do you mean? He said, well, 
instead of those being sucked up by the vacuum, he said it might not seem like a lot, but I picked them up and put them back in the bin so we, we would cut costs. You see, there are people who walk right past the paper clip on the floor because it's not their job, or it's beneath them to do that. Someone, an entrepreneur, I just heard recently say this, there are no million dollar ideas there are million dollar executions, million dollar work. Let's be creative. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to help us. You say, sitting there thinking, hey, there's nothing for me to do. Oh, yes, there is. There's something for you to do. And He will use you. My friends, be ye therefore steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Will you stand with me this morning? Will you sing with me? We'll give the glory to Jesus.